raised in a dysfunctional family or are you even in a dysfunctional family even right now? See, this is so good. Oh, this yeah. is so good. This Amen. is so good. Everybody should be raising their hand. Let me be the first to put my <laughs> hand up. Everybody should be raising their hand. If you were <laughs> raised in a dysfunctional family, just raise your hand. Say, I was raised in a dysfunctional family. If you're in a dysfunctional family, say, I'm in it. We want to see what we're working with, what we're dealing with, okay? Yes, yes. This is so good. Maybe you're even, you're, you're trying to understand, you know, why your family is the way that it is. You know, it could be a lot of dysfunction even right. going on because it was passed down. Right. You understand? Amen. So That's we've good. got to stop this today. Yes. And we've got to break that dysfunctional spirit in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. All right. So I see him saying me, me, yes, yes. Now, define dysfunctional. Let's first of all, let's understand what it means to be in a dysfunctional family or what does it mean to be dysfunctional? Do you have a thought on that, man of God? Uh, yes, the word dysfunction, I looked it up. Mm -hmm. It means by confused of. Mm. So to be confused, but it was something that caused the confusion. So the word dis on mm -hmm. the front of it makes the word function, <laughs> you know, go the word oh, function. Right, right. The mm -hmm. word function actually actually means something that is working. Mm -hmm. But when you put this on the front of it, mm -hmm. it's it's something that caused it not to work. Wow. Amen. So something that was working. Right. Now has become something that's yes. broke. Broken. Yes. So can we go back to the Garden of Eden? Hallelujah. When Amen. God created mankind, he created mankind in the image and likeness of Christ. Yes. Something that was working. Working. Come but on. But then when Adam <laughs> and Ooh. Eve... In other words, when mankind disobeyed God Break and rebelled against God, we became a human species that no longer works. Wow. This so we became, oh my God, That's good. dysfunctional. Yes. So <laughs> everybody should have raised their hand because at some point in your life, you were dysfunctional. True. And raised in total dysfunction. Function. True. My goodness. True. That's a scary thing because when people don't know that, they don't think anything is wrong with them. Right. And when you don't realize that something is wrong with you, you're actually broke, which means that your nature is a broken nature mm -hmm. uh, before God, which means you don't carry a righteous nature. So that means every human being that's in a broken state uh, is eligible to do anything oh, yeah. like you can't put anything past a human being that's what i'm trying to say amen i totally agree with that. because in a broken state there's no telling what you will do when you are approached with something True. that's why we can't run off at the mouth and talk about oh i would never do that baby you don't know what you would do when you get in a situation that's why we have to always stay humble True. because our flesh is yes. in a broken state and it's subject to do anything, anything. that is unrighteous Amen. that that's is true. unruly that's, my lord that's good so let me just read my notes when it comes to dysfunctional family now i'm going to read some things and if this pertains to you if you can relate to it then you're on the right broadcast today <laughs> if you can relate to this you're on the right broadcast today and you guys please share the video on your pages yes. um tag somebody in it with us glory be to god let's fill up the sanctuary amen amen now <clears throat> dysfunctional family is a family in which conflict misbehavior and often child neglect or abuse on the part of individual parents occur continuously and regularly. Now, I want you all to answer this mm -hmm. in the comments because when we can identify something, we can begin to get healed from it. Now, you you all just heard partly what I read. Is there anybody on here that's willing to acknowledge any type of um dysfunction that you grew up in like what can you remember as a child growing up that you can say you know what that was dysfunction or that wasn't right you know was it abuse was it neglect was it whatever it comes to your mind that you can think of right now go ahead and put those in the comments 
Amen. Because we're going to let the word deal with all of this. That's good. We're going to let the word deal with all of this. And we're going to get free from these things today. Yes. Amen. Yes. So it's a family in which conflict, misbehavior, and often child neglect or abuse on the part of individual parents occur continuously and regularly leading other members to accommodate such actions. Wow. Children, listen to this. Children sometimes grow up in such families with the understanding that such a situation is normal. That, and that's the crazy part right there. <laughs> when something broken that's supposed to be working in our lives, we view it as it's working, but it's not working. And, 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 and on, we that. think it's normal when <laughs> right. that's all we know. <laughs> Ooh, and when you grow up Lord in a family structure and that's all you know, that's normal to you. My, My God. Yeah, that's good. So when you go out and live your life, you know, you you you're you're uh, 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 you have a certain character about yourself, but you don't see anything wrong with you because your family is the same way. That's all you've ever <laughs> seen throughout your life. My Lord, that's come on so somebody. Come Lord, on somebody. That's good. Dysfunction. So Man. Uh, and, and let me just say this. I thought that how I grew up was normal. I thought my family structure was a normal family structure. I saw my mom get abused mentally and physically. However, I also saw my dad support his family, take care of his family, different things like that. So in my mind, I thought that, you know, love consisted of taking care of a family, making sure all needs are provided, mm -hmm. but then it could also be abusive too. So that was normal to me. Mm -hmm. So when I started dating, guess what? I was attracting the same type of men that I only knew men to be. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Mm -hmm. My, 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 my. Wow. So my normal was total dysfunction. Wow. Okay, dysfunctional families are primarily a result of two adults, one typically overtly abusive and the other codependent and may also be affected by addictions such as substance abuse, drugs, including alcohol, or sometimes by an untreated mental illness. You know what? That last one is so not talked about. The untreated mental illness. Mental illness. Go ahead and talk about that. You know, uh, in a lot of in a lot of families, um, praise God, we have we we do have loved ones who suffer from mental illnesses. Mm -hmm. I can I can um, be transparent and say my mother, she suffered from a type of mental illness and everything that caused a lot of dysfunction in in my family growing up. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was normal, like you, because I had the two parents in the home. You know, mom's dad was right there. This and that, you know, uh, but it was a lot of dysfunction. Yes. Because of that that uh that illness. Yes. Amen. My Lord. And I'm sitting here looking at 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 uh my mother and my aunt, my mother Janice Coleman and my aunt Ruth, they're sisters. <clears throat> and both of them are sharing the same story. Parents arguing, fighting, not showing love, alcoholism. My mm -hmm. God. So you see how this is all just tying together, yes. how we all have this. You know, we have more in common with one another than we think. That's true. And then we're at war with each other when actually the war is not between us as humans. It's between uh, our on. dysfunction That's mindset versus so a functional mindset. That's so good. My God, come wow. on, somebody. I like that. <clears throat> so. <clears throat> That's good. Uh. Now, dysfunctional parents may emulate or overcorrect from their own dysfunctional parents. So oftentimes, how we end up raising our children tends to be the same way we were raised. True. We will automatically pick up certain traits and characteristics, even if it's not the exact same or it may not be as bad because you try to... You know, like sometimes I hear people say, I'm not going to be like my mom. I'm not going to be like my dad, mm -hmm. you know, but it, but guess what? When you, when your mind has been corrupted, even a little bit, it corrupts your whole mind. True. So you may not pick up a physical abuse, but you may pick up a mental abuse. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Which both of them are just as bad. 
So there's something about you that have already been instilled in you in your upbringing that's totally dysfunctional. Yes. It's totally unrighteous. It's, it's corrupted. Yes. And then it bleeds into your own children. Glory My God. God. So <clears throat> in some cases, the dominant parent will abuse or neglect their children and the other parent will not object misleading a child to assume blame that's good some features are common to most dysfunctional families these are some of the things that you can look for that suggest that you are raised in a dysfunctional family or you're in a dysfunctional family right now lack of empathy mm. meaning understanding right. or sensitivity towards certain family members while expressing extreme empathy or appeasement towards one or more members who have real or perceived special needs. In other words, one family member continuously receives far more than they deserve. Wow. While another is marginalized. Wow. So favoritism. Favoritism. Favoritism, in other words. That's one of the most hatefulest things growing up as children is to feel like a parent is showing favoritism over one child. To another. That's true. That's true. Amen. Denial. Before we, before we jump into denial, mm -hmm. it's I want to show some. I want to show somebody in the Bible where it was favoritism in Genesis thirty-seven, verse number three. Mm -hmm. It says, "Now Israel, talking about Jacob, loved Joseph more than all his other children mm -hmm. because he was the son in his old age." And he had made him a coat of many colors. Mm -hmm. Woo! Wow. Favoritism. Favoritism. Mm -hmm. Denial. Refusal to acknowledge abusive behavior. Mm -hmm. Possibly believing that the situation is normal or even beneficial. My God. <laughs> Refusing to acknowledge. How many of you have grew up in homes where you knew something one right about your parent or parents or whatever, but they refused to acknowledge any wrongdoing on their part. They were content in the abuse. To them, it was their way of, well, I'm the parent, you the child, whatever I say, go type yeah. attitude. Yeah, it's a lot of parents that raise their children like that. Yes. And they thought it was, they said that this is, the child needed this. They, and, and a lot of them reflected upon their childhood. Mm -hmm. They was like, hey, my, my parents done me like this. It didn't kill me. I'm still here. Now I'm going to do you like that. Mm -hmm. My God. Mm -hmm. Wow. So a, a dysfunction is denial, refusing to acknowledge abusive behavior. Yes. Uh, that's a prideful person, a stubborn person, a person with a cold heart type person. My goodness. Help us, Lord. Help yes. us, Father. Mm. Inadequate or missing boundaries for self. In other words, tolerating inappropriate treatment from others. Failing to express what is acceptable and unacceptable treatment. Tolerance of physical, emotional, mm. or sexual abuse. Wow. Wow. Kind of like turning turning the, 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 your eye to what you see. <laughs> And you just going to accept that? Like, no. Wow. Or maybe even blaming the victim. Right. You know, you got some children in homes that have been abused, whether sexually or physically, and they put the blame on the victim mm -hmm. rather than uh, um, actually dealing with the, the perpetrator. Yes. So, you know, that victim is there in all sorts of dysfunctional fear, um, and can you just imagine, you don't know who to turn to because the people who are supposed to be protecting you are the ones abusing you or even allowing it to happen. That's true. You know, somebody knowing abuse is going on is just as guilty as the abuser because you're not doing anything to save and rescue that person out of that situation. And that's My a terrible God. thing. My God. That's a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. Hallelujah. Imagine being a child and you don't have nobody to protect you. You don't have your mother to protect you, your father to protect you. Everybody turns a deaf ear to it. What are you to do? My Lord. Ooh, that's messed up. That is true. Dysfunction. And I'm glad that we're conversating and having this talk about this today. You know, in a lot of our assemblies, this is what needs to be addressed. 
And instead of all this arguing, bigger and fighting over this and that, and, you know, nonchalant things, we need to start addressing some real issues that are going on in our families because now it's spilling over into our society. And the only way things are going to get going to get better is that we begin to address it. Absolutely. In Jesus name. And also disrespect of others' boundaries, physical contact that other person dislikes, yes. breaking important promises without just cause. Yes. Purposely violating a boundary another person has expressed. Dysfunction. Dysfunction. Breaking important promises. You know, one thing a person has is their word. Oh yeah. You know, when you say things and then you don't keep what you say, you know, you 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 creating a total divide and really a hatred. You know, to break promises to your family is creating a hatred towards toward from, from them to you. Amen. That's true. That's that's just a terrible thing. Um, extremes in conflict, either too much fighting or insufficient, insufficient, peaceful arguing between family members. <laughs> How many of you come from families that, that are extreme in their conflict? I mean, they <laughs> fight either too much fighting, arguing, uh, there's no peace. You can't go to a cookout without something jumping <laughs> off. Every time there's a gathering, you know that when uncle so-and-so show up or when cousin so-and-so show up or whoever that is going down. How many of you have people like that? And we've laughed at that for so long and made that normal, not even realizing it, realizing that we've actually applauded dysfunction. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I like it says insufficient, peaceful arguments like you, you, you even though you're trying to be peaceful about the whole situation, your argument did not. Uh, uh, it, didn't, it, it did not obtain anything. It did not come to a resolution. Mm. It was not resolved. Mm. You know, so more, That's good. more dysfunction just kept on going. Glory That's good. To God. <laughs> and then that begins to sit. That begins to set up bitterness. Yes. And unforgiveness between you and your family members. Yes. Unresolved issues, not making peace with situations. Yes. My Lord. That's so important. That's, so key. that's, that's absolutely because we as human beings, for one thing, we always want the last word. We always want to be the one that's right. And if we don't get the last word, if we're not right, then it's like, okay, well, I don't want nothing else to do with you then. Yes. And that's how, that that's how the broken part of us is. Yes, yes. And it comes from the, our, that selfish, selfish, sinful nature, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's in our flesh mm -hmm. that has to be crucified daily. Yes. Daily. So before we even get to that, we got to first acknowledge why we need our flesh crucified. Yes. So, so we're, we're starting from the basics right here. Glory. We're starting from the point of, I want you all to realize what's going on in your family. So when I teach these things, and, and, it, and it applies to you, you know why this is going on, so you can know how to deal with yes. it. Yes, <laughs> that's good. But first it begins with us. That's so good. everything that we're dealing with has to start with self first. Amen? Amen. Now, I want to go to 2 Timothy 3 and 1. Now, this is what we're dealing with right now. Now, everybody heard what it means to be a dysfunctional family, and most of you all can relate, Right? So everybody on here can relate one way or another. Thank you, husband. I've been up since three o'clock this morning. <clears throat> excuse me. So please excuse my cracking voice. Oh my goodness. Um, let's go to 2 Timothy 3, starting at verse 1. Now, <laughs> this is what we're dealing with in our families. And in our society. But it starts in our family. Yes. This is the attitude and the mindset of what you're up against. Okay? This is what we're up against when it comes to our families. <clears throat> Human beings. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3 starting at verse 1 says this. But know this. That in the last days perilous times will come. How many of you know that we're out that we've been in the last days? The last days started at the fall of man. Glory be to the God. <clears throat> that's why the whole Bible consists of dysfunctional people. <laughs> <laughs> the whole Bible from Genesis. 
to revelation consists of dysfunctional people that need to be redeemed, that need to be brought back to God. Yes. And you know what's so <clears throat> awesome about what you just said to bring? I hope, I hope we caught that. Because out of the whole Bible, everybody was dysfunctional mm -hmm. except one. It, ooh, come on. Except ah, one. My God. Except one. One. Except one. Ooh, <laughs> I hope y'all got that. So when we read in the Bible, we can always see ourselves in there. And then it exposes us that, oh, I'm dysfunctional too. Oh, you yes. see what I'm saying? Yeah, my issue. I'm in need of a savior. I'm yes. in need of a new mindset. Come on, somebody. Yes. So the Bible is literally a mirror of who we are right oh, now geez. in our ways of thinking. So Amen. Good. Amen. So <laughs> he says that for men will be lovers of themselves. Yes. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers. My God. Disobedient to parents. Thank you, Jesus. Unthankful, unholy, mm. unloving, unforgiving, yes. slanderers, without self control, brutal, My God. despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such, people turn away. Yes. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to. To come to the knowledge of the truth. Ooh. Wow. The enemy of dysfunction have crept into your household. And he's been there from generations to generations to generations to generations. Yes. He's been there. Yes. The enemy of dysfunction has been there. Yes. yes. My Lord. And you know, we can go back and forth about, you know, your dysfunction is this, my dysfunction is this. That dysfunction is dysfunction. Come on. Period. Dysfunction you know what I mean? is dysfunction. Ooh, and the enemy <clears throat> has crept in, praise God, and generational curses. Now it's time for God to reverse that. Praise yes. Praise the Lord. So notice the last thing he say, always learning. So, so we're, so in other words, people are learning something. Yes. Something is influencing the mind of people all the time. All the time. But then the Bible says, and never able to come into knowledge of the truth. So just because you're learning something doesn't mean that it's the right thing, that it's the righteous thing, that it's the actual truth that comes from God. That is so good. So guess what? We learn how to hate our enemy. Yes. We learn how to not forgive Somebody that did something to us. Yes. We learn how to hate somebody because they're not the same color as we are. Yes. We learn how to disrespect adults. Come on, somebody, yes. because they not my mama or they not my daddy. Come we on. learn That's how good. to cuss a teacher out because you saw your mother cuss the teacher out. My we God. learn how to do these things because we hear mother doing it or we hear dad doing it. Come on, somebody. That's we good. learn these things. Yes, 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 yes. We have created simulation. Amen. And the word simulation means is to create a likeness or a model of a situation, system, or something that is uh, that that you like. So we watch our parents do some stuff. We watch uncles and aunties and all of no that. No matter how much they try to hide it. And we learn them same dysfunctions and behaviors. You can't hide a spirit. <laughs> Type that. That's good. You can't That's hide good. a spirit. That's Listen, good. you can try to hide... Your, your 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 porno videos, <laughs> or you could try to hide deep down in your teach, drawers. Teach. You know what I mean? Or you could try to hide your alcohol way in the back of the refrigerator and whatnot. But how many of you know that you can't hide a spirit? 
Cannot hide a spirit. You can't hide who you are. My Lord. Your whole self, you cannot hide. Because guess what? Whatever's in the whatever's hidden in the back of that refrigerator is you. Whatever is <laughs> hidden down and deep down in those drawers or up in them closets is you. Can I put some word on it? The Bible says that whatever's hidden in darkness shall come to come the light. Come on. My God. You we can't, can't hide, hide it. You can't hide the spirit. My Lord. Come on, somebody. My God, the only thing that we can do is address it. Come on, come Hallelujah. on. Hallelujah. My on. God. This is good. <clears throat> this is it's about to get better now. Y'all ready to ride? We ride. I want to get that out the way. Ooh. Now it's time to ride. That's right. Who's ready to ride? I'm ready to ride. Let's ride. <laughs> time to rock and roll now. Get down to wow. business. So, 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 because I want to make sure that nobody's on here saying, well, I, 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 my family wasn't that bad. I mean, we didn't do all that right there. I mean, you know, they, they did some stuff, but it wasn't that bad. You know, I mean, it was all right, you know. Right, right. I mean, I was all right. No, you corrupted and totally dysfunctional. All of us were. Like everybody else. Come on, somebody. That's good. I love it. Come on. I didn't grow up in the hood, you know. I grew up in the <laughs> suburbs. We didn't we didn't hear gunshots at night. But you was killing people in your thoughts. My you was God. cussing people out. That's you was good. rude and arrogant and okay, come I on. I love it. I love this. There's not one good. Not one. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God glory of God. This is so good. Come on, somebody. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let's see. So what are we dealing with? Go to Mark 3. Mark 3. Verse 22. Okay. What are we dealing with here? Hallelujah. When we talk about dysfunction and function. Let's put it in kingdom terms. All right, all right. We're dealing with two kingdoms. Two kingdoms. The kingdom of function <laughs> and the kingdom of dysfunction. Hallelujah. Since we're talking about dysfunction, oh, yeah. okay? I like, I like that word play. That's yeah. good. That's good. The kingdom of dark, Come which on. is dysfunction, and the kingdom of light. Which is function. Yes. The kingdom of <laughs> Satan. Yes. And the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on, that's good. You either living in the kingdom of Satan. My God. Or you're living in the kingdom of God. True. Function or dysfunction. True. Come on, somebody. So are y'all with us? Oh, man. <clears throat> we ride. So let's go to <laughs> Mark 3, starting at verse 22, says this. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebub, mm -hmm. and by the ruler of the demons, he cast out demons. Now, he was talking about Jesus. Yes, yes. <clears throat> That's one of your favorite stories, One of my it? favorite Talk stories. Talk about it while I sip this water. You, you know, <clears throat> I, I, what's ironic, like I said, it was the, the scribes, you know, the ones who uh, had the law and they knew the scriptures and all that. They came at Jesus like that. You the know, religious leaders. The religious leaders. Yeah. yeah. The church folks. Yeah. Quote, unquote. Right. Uh-huh. Right. In the big fancy temples. Right. Them people. Right. That wore the robes. Right. And called him a devil. Yeah. See, Beelzebub <laughs> means prince of the lord of the flies. Mm -hmm. You know, my God. Mm -hmm. The devil. They called him the they devil. They called him the devil. My God. So they told Jesus when he was casting demons out, they said, well, the only reason why he's able to do that is because he's a demon himself. Jeez, so they were so ignorant to think that a demon could cast another demon out. Right. Or even would cast another demon out. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so let's see so let's let's see how Jesus shut them down. I love I love the way Jesus Ooh. always shut them down. Ooh, real, you. real nasty. That means nice and nasty. He was <laughs> nasty. So Jesus rolled up on the scene nasty. Come on, somebody. Sure, sure did. 23 say, so he called to them, so he called them to himself and said to them in parables, mm. how can Satan cast out Satan? <laughs> if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. My Lord. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Wow, that's good. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but has an end. Mm. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods 
unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house. That's so good. That's so good. What am I saying? First of all, what's happening in a lot of our homes is we're trying to deal with one another. We're trying to fight fire with fire. Like you talked about yesterday. Oh, yeah. And you can't fight fire with fire. See, the issue in our family is the thoughts that are in the minds of oh, our God. family members. That's so good. Our battle and our war and our fight has to do with our thought process. That's good. Our thinking pattern. See, when we're talking about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan, we're talking about a way of thinking. Yes. And a way of thinking produces a way of life. Yes. So when when Jesus was casting out demons, okay, first of all, he was casting out thoughts, unrighteous thoughts, mm -hmm. unholiness. Mm -hmm. Come on. He was casting out corruption. So he was casting out those spirits that were contrary to the word of God. True. My God. Hallelujah. So if Satan's goal is to keep you <laughs> ignorant and keep Come you living on. in the wrong thoughts. Why you. would he cast himself out of your mind? I hear Why you would he cast clear, his Holy thoughts Spirit. out of your mind? That's good. Come on. If Satan's whole goal My is to God. keep you a person who will not forgive and keep you in unforgiveness. Why? Because he knows that the only way that God will forgive you is if you forgive your enemy. Ooh. If Satan's goal Jesus. is to keep you with the mindset, or oh, I'm not ever going to forgive them, then guess what? Then he's come against his own self. Sure did. That means he suddenly got on God's side. And, <laughs> and our Satan is not going to get on God's side ever in life. It all facts. My God. Ooh, that's come so on, good. somebody. That's shouting stuff right there. Come on, somebody. That's stuff Y'all right going to pick this I up in a minute. Come on. Stuff. So when Jesus stepped, I, I can't shout from my voice. I almost, my got, I, I, I almost went into the preach then, but my voice. My when Jesus God. stepped on the scene, see what we got to understand is Jesus stepped on the scene to change the thought pattern yes. in human beings because our thoughts have been corrupted. Our thoughts became dysfunctional. True. Our thoughts is the reason why we act out the way that we do. True. Oh, can I, can I help you out? Can I help you out a little bit? Yes. And, and, and then the religious leaders, praise uh -huh. God. Put their religious <laughs> traditional mask on, uh -huh. and, and 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 they hid behind the traditions of oh we pray, uh -huh. oh we know the scriptures. Uh -huh. My God! Oh, but Jesus said, look, you look good on the outside My with Lord. your nice robes on, on and your big fancy hats and all that. Come you on. look good Preach. on the outside, but on the inside, Preach. you are full of dead men's bones. My God! Come you on. are corrupt. You teaching people to obey laws that you don't even keep yourself. Come on. Glory to God. My God, come Ooh. on. These same people. Come the on. Mask. He said they have the keys of the kingdom. My but Lord. they, even though they got the keys, oh that means even hey. though they got the law, they got hey, the hey. principles of God. Hey. But Jesus told me, he said, not only do you not come in the kingdom, but you keep other ones from coming into the yes. kingdom of God. Yes. Come on, somebody. Totally and these people were supposed to be experts in the law. Yes. But they said something so foolish and ignorant as to Satan would actually cast Satan out. Right? <laughs> so <clears throat> this is going to help us. Now, Get in the word. can I tell somebody what Jesus did? Hallelujah. He said that he said no one can enter a strong man's house 
and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Mm. In other words, no one can change the mindset My of Lord. a human being that was raised in total dysfunction Jesus. with one idea, That's with good. one uh, uh, a way of living their life. Come on, spirit. against what their own mother taught them, against what their own father taught them, yes. against what their own granddaddy taught them. That's he said, good. unless somebody else come with even more knowledge, yes. unless somebody come with more power, unless That's somebody good. come with the actual truth of God. Yes. Which will bind them crazy thoughts up. Come Just on. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Tie it up. Where it won't control that person no Come more. Come on. It's bound. It can't my, move. My, my. It's stuck. Woo. And then he cast it out. And Come he on. Put new thoughts in our mind. Come new on. New wine. New ideas. Yes. New. new the, the word. The truth. The true truth. The you know. truth. My God, this come is on. so good. So that's why Jesus had to come and wrap himself in flesh God. because he had to come and be the Ooh, word of God. God. He had, The word had to come from <laughs> heaven. Come on. And wrap itself up in flesh. Oh, and God. then why? Because he had to demonstrate Thank God's you, kingdom here in the earth realm. He yeah. had to show us what it really means to live out the will of God because no human being was capable of doing it. Everybody was corrupt. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody was dysfunctional in some right. type of a way. So God said, I can't use another human <laughs> being because it continues to go downhill. So I got to come and be the last sacrifice once and for all and handle this sin issue. The My sin God. of dysfunction. The sin of dysfunction. I, I got to it. handle that issue. My God. So that my, my people, my people can come back to me <laughs> in their way of thinking and living. I come on, it. somebody. I love it. So what did he do? This is what he did. This is how Jesus binded the strong man. Come on, somebody. How he plundered his goods. Yes. You know, the enemy's goods are all the bad things. <laughs> That's the enemy's goods. All Come the on, bad thoughts, good. everything that opposes the knowledge of God. Yes. That's the enemy's goods. So Jesus had to come and destroy that. So in Colossians 2.12, it explains it all. It tells us that buried with him in baptism. See, when we got baptized, we got buried with Christ yes. in baptism. In which you also were raised with him through what? Faith in the working of God. My God. Who raised him from the dead. Yes. This is the process. This is justification. And you being dead in your trespasses. So, you know, we were dead <laughs> in our trespasses. So what is he saying? And you being in your dysfunction. Yes. Yes. See, before we can deal with our family, we got to first realize and recognize the process that happened with us. So that process can happen with them. Yeah, that's good. And stop expecting them to live a certain way when they have not gone through this process. Ooh, Come, on, Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. See, good. see, many of your family are still dead in their trespasses. True. Come on. But the Bible says, and we being dead in our trespasses and the uncircumcision of our flesh, he has made alive together. Lord. With him having forgiven you all trespasses. My God. He forgave our sins. My God. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he was and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, Ooh. having disarmed principalities yes. and powers. He made yes. a public spectacle of them, <laughs> triumphing over them in it. Thank you, Jesus, Jesus done already did the work. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus done already did the work for yes. mankind. Thank you, Jesus. This act that Jesus did on the cross was for mankind, period. Yes. My Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So we don't have to take the put the mask of religion on and then we don't have to live and continue in our dysfunction that the, the, the things that are in our flesh we don't have to continue to allow them to lead us astray glory be to god by the kingdom knowledge of god we can try to obey the word of god through god's spirit because we know the right thing to do now 
See, when sin controlled us, we didn't know that that was wrong. Sin. When I was an alcoholic, I did not know that being an alcoholic was a wrong thing to do. I thought it was cool because everybody else was doing it. Because I saw my uncle being an alcoholic, glory be to God. And I saw his friends being alcoholic. And he put the bottle in my hand when I was six years old. Dysfunction? Mm -hmm. What a six-year-old supposed to be doing drinking? Seven, six and seven years old, mm -hmm. I'm drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. Come on, not dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And then that spirit was upon me. But when God broke me free, mm -hmm. glory be to God. Yes. Woo, I shout and run around like I do now. Absolutely. So your uncle probably felt like that was love towards you. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was, no that, that, that was the, the, the corruption in his mind, his idea of thinking that that's love and, oh, yeah. you know, this is the way to go and this and that. And so, see, that's the, that's the whole power of, of influence. Yes. That power of influence of Satan and then the power of influence of God. So yes. these are the two things, the Thank two you, areas Jesus. that we're dealing with here, even in our own households. Amen. Amen. So Jesus already, what our families don't realize, is is this they don't understand that but in faith in christ will free them from the torment of their mind sure. every individual i don't care who they are or how much money they got or how it look like they live in their life apart from god they are in total torment True. they are dead men walking My apart god. from god they have no peace in their life True. So there's always an area in them that is searching and seeking for something that only God can feel. Amen. Oh, so God. Jesus already did that work for us. Yes. So guess what? The spirit of dysfunction is handled already. Yes. So guess what? That spirit no longer has to have power and dominion in our life. True. Amen. Amen. Glory to Amen. God. And this comes by faith in God. That's why the Bible says we are saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, faith in Christ. And Thank that's you. been the problem. We put faith in everything else. Faith in our water baptisms. Faith in our speaking in tongues. Faith in our going to the buildings every Sunday. Come on. Faith in our pastors. Faith in our putting oil. You see what I'm saying? Amen. But we have not put real faith in Christ for the breaking of that power of influence, those yes. thoughts in our mind, the way Glory. of thinking, the renewal of our mind. Thank and you, that Jesus. is the problem. Glory so we've God. not been able to produce the fruit of the Holy Ghost. True. Thank now, you, this is how we deal with dysfunction <laughs> in our family. Yes. Because, see, we <laughs> what we've been used to is fighting fire with fire. True. If they cuss you out, the whole household is cussing. Everybody cussing off the chain, hollering, yelling, screaming, doing all of that, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not the way it works in God's kingdom. Right, right. Because why? We're not dealing with flesh and blood. Wow. See, we're preach. not dealing with flesh and blood. This is the knowledge that we have to have that's as good. children of God that are now in the kingdom of God. That's so good. He teaches us what we're really up against yes. and how to deal with that. Amen. Amen. So That's let's good. go to, very quickly, let's go to Ephesians 6, starting at verse 10. Ephesians 6, starting at verse 10. This is what you're up against in your family, and this is what, this is how you need to handle your family. Or anybody, your yes. co-workers, people in general. This Lord is what God. you're up against. Ephesians 6, starting at verse 10, says, finally. Mm -hmm. and, I, and so I'm going to say finally because I'm going to say finally Jesus dealt with that spirit <laughs> on that cross. Yes, he did. Come on. And so since he's done that, now we have the opportunity to follow in his footsteps. Finally, be strong in the Lord strong. and in the strength of his might. Yeah, now, yeah. how many of you know that once you get filled with the Holy Spirit, it is no longer you who live, but Christ <laughs> who lives in you? Yes. Type that. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes, that's good. Know that's who you good. are in this kingdom and that's what good. you possess. That's good. So before we can think we're going to stand against Satan or do anything, we first got to be strong in the yes. Lord, well equipped, yes. full of knowledge. Yes. Come on, knowing of his truth, True. knowing the word. Glory to God, true. <clears throat> Put on the whole armor of God mm -hmm. that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. 
For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. That's our human nature. True. Okay? We don't wrestle against that. But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil mm -hmm. in the heavenly places. That's so good. What is it talking about? Your problem with your family is the influence that they have in their life that is against the influence of righteousness that you now carry in your life. That's so good. Does everybody understand that? That is good. Yes. So there's, there, there's a spirit in them that is completely opposed to the righteousness of Christ. So it's nothing for them to argue back with you or mm -hmm. disrespect you as a parent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or just do things that just seem like they, it's out of control and, you know, this and that. Why? Because they don't have the right spirit leading them. That's right. You know, it's it's normal for them if your siblings are not getting along. You can't get along with your siblings. You can't get along with your other family members. That's normal for them. Mm -hmm. But it's dysfunctional now, dysfunctional now for you because mm -hmm. Jesus has changed it. That's right. good. That's good. Right. So to them, all oh, that's normal. Oh yeah. And but to you, you recognize that that's not right <laughs> because you 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 follow Christ. You're in another My kingdom. So good. even though you're in the home with them, you're not. You're you're in a whole nother kingdom. My that God. means you have a different idea of how to live now. Yes. Your 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 thinking has changed now. Yes. Okay. Amen. Amen. So now you're, let me tell you guys something. This Bible tells us that you're up against rulers and against authorities, against cosmic powers. Of the Listen, our children and people in general have influences that come from high ups. They come from governments. They come from, oh, from yeah. president. It come from, so we're anywhere there's corruption. These are powers of influence. So if you have a president that's corrupted, guess what? A whole nation will be corrupted. Mm -hmm. If you have a police academy that's corrupted, then the police uh, 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 will be corrupted. Mm -hmm. That's in the communities. Do you all understand that? So if, if um, the TV has all this corruption on there, then guess what? It's going to pour in corruption mm -hmm. consistently. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, huh. Amen. Amen. And then, you know, we have to understand and be patient because it takes time when God does a renovation. Just like if you, if you have, if you start off with a corrupt president who begins to pass down corrupt laws and corruption comes upon the nation, mm -hmm. when a righteous president comes into order uh, or, or a righteous uh, person like in a police force, like you said, comes into play, or a righteous mayor, or a righteous whoever, when that person comes in, now God has to begin to do some renovation. Praise God. Meaning that he got to begin to work on the hearts and the minds and the whole, um, what I want to say, the whole culture has to be changed because it was once corrupt. Now it's, it's, it's being made clean through the power of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. So then the Bible say, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Yes. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, let's just talk about that right quick. Yes. Because just like my husband just got through saying, when a righteous person steps on the scene, that righteous person is supposed to carry the glory of God. True. That means light have just stepped on the scene. Wow. That means the truth, the knowledge of God, the kingdom of God has just stepped on the scene. Now, let's use this um, incident that just happened in, Min in uh, Minnesota for an example. Mm -hmm. Out of all those police officers that were, that were there, and that officer that had his knee on that on on um that brother's neck. Mm -hmm. If there was one righteous police officer, I, I guarantee you, if you ask them if they are a Christian, I guarantee you at least one of them will claim to be a Christian. Wow. Because you know everybody claim oh, almost yeah. to be a Christian. I guarantee that they got a church that they belong to. You might can go on their Facebook and they'll say, oh, I'm blessed and this and that. I guarantee that they'll tell you they are Christian. But not one righteous man was at the scene in a police uniform because if it had been, 
The Bible tells us to stand. And what does it mean to take a stand? To take a stand is to publicly assert one strong rejection of or opposition to someone or something. It means to contradict, oppose, to disprove, to expose. So a police officer who is truly of God would have never allowed any type of corruption to happen against that citizen because that citizen is a human being and they would have told that officer, no, you are not right in what you're doing. This is against police policy and you need to get up and they would have did, they would have made him get up off of his neck and that man could have been living right here today. Amen. I totally agree with that. And you know, this just shows the, the state of the union that we are in, how critical it is, you know, that we don't need more people talking about trying to run up in the church buildings. We need more leaders. And right now, Minnesota needs a voice, a reason, a voice for to declare healing, a voice right now that will be able to help lead and guide these people while they are rioting. You know, if we're going to be, let's look at us, let's look at everybody as being a family. The United States of America family, praise God. Can we now see the dysfunction, praise God, between races, between uh, police officers and communities and all that? It's so much corruption and dysfunction going on. So, And this is why we have to address these issues yes. and begin to try to, you know, teach more kingdom knowledge and teach more. God is not pleased with that. He don't want us to be fighting and all that and killing one another. Come on. That's good. Yes. So it, it does us no good to run up in these buildings and just want to dance and sing. And No, what does us some good is getting up out of there and, and being a police officer on your force and yes. showing the righteousness of Christ. Jesus, That's, that's what God wants to see. That's what God is pleased with. So, you know, you wonder why all this stuff that's been shut down. Why? Because you've got, if, if there's a police officer that go to church on Sunday, but then you put that uniform on and you go out there on your beat and you are unrighteous in your policing. You are corrupt. If you don't hold up for the dignity of human beings, if you allow unrighteousness to go on, then you are wrong. You, you, are, you are not operating in the spirit of God. Amen. You are not operating in the spirit of God. Amen. And what I want to do is encourage the saints to let us continue to pray. Uh, be 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 encouraged. Don't get discouraged by about the things that you see that's going on because we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith, and we just gonna continue to stay strong and persevere through that, and continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Minnesota. Yes. Now let's go to Second Corinthians ten, starting at verse three. Second Corinthians ten, starting at verse three. It reminds us. It says, "For though we walk in the flesh, that means we live in the flesh. Flesh is another word." word for world yes. all right or you know our flesh is corrupted so we live in corruptible mindset yes. we had a corruptible mindset so the world has a corruptible mindset true okay for though we walk in the flesh for though we live in the flesh we do not war yeah. according to the flesh so all of us still have this flesh we're all still capable of thinking something wrong. <laughs> and if we think something wrong, we're capable of doing something wrong. Yes. All right. Nobody's mind is in a place where it doesn't think anything wrong anymore because we're still human beings. Amen. Amen. So we're not in a glorified body yet. So nobody don't need to think that they just done made it. And all of a sudden, you know, they are just are able to just do this and do that and not going to do this and do that. Just stop fooling yourself with that. You ain't got to convince nobody about that. Okay. That's true. And and I want to say this that the Bible says that that we we when we are weak, we're only made strong in Christ once we acknowledge our weaknesses. See, too many times I see too many church folks, you know, God and save you. Now you want to try to boast in your strength. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at me. I'm bishop, apostle, so and evangelist, so and so, prophetess to the nation by so and so. Oh, okay. You 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 bragging about your strength, and that, and and the strength only comes from God, and that call that's on your life came from the Lord. 
Let's, let's begin to talk about when you begin to be thinking, thinking hateful things towards people. When you're talking about other Christian church folks. When you're talking about other, praise God, uh, people in society and all that stuff. And you, you're talking about it, but you're not trying to do anything about it. Lend some love today. Glory be to God. That's, what, that's my message for you. Lend some love today. All right. So, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That means are not of the world. So we don't think and do things the same way the world thinks and does things. True. As, as over in the kingdom of God, no matter what's going on in this world, we have a different law that we abide by. True. We have different principles that we live by. Okay. God expects something different from us in our actions. True. All right. Now, the Bible tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. That means the divine power of God. We have something that the world don't have, which is the divine power of God. Yes. In 2 Corinthians 6, 7, it says, uh, in truthful speech. And in the power of God True. with the weapons of righteousness. We have the weapons of righteousness. Type that in the comment. Yes. I have the weapons of righteousness. Righteousness is the truth of God. Just like you were saying, people want the people in church so bad want to just boast about all this type of and they don't know the word. They don't they they, they just got all these big fancy Big fancy stuff that they just saying and this and that trying to look like they just so powerful and blah, blah, this and that. The Bible simply says, listen, in truthful speech, my God, <laughs> you really want to exalt power? Know the word of God. Yes. Be truthful in speech and use the weapons of righteousness. True. <laughs> True. True. And, you know, what I love about this kingdom message is that. It goes any and everywhere. You know, sure, people are going to talk about, you know, this and talk about that and say this and say that. But, you know, we should, we, we should be able to stand a little talk, you know, from somebody who don't want to receive. But to the people who do want to receive in our communities that are hurting, that are angry, you can take the kingdom of God to them because God is love. God is forgiveness. God is redemption. God is peace. God is all of these things, praise God, that we need, that they need right now in, in our society. Glory to God. The kingdom message. Yes. So, uh, for pulling down strongholds. All right. Now, what is a stronghold? A stronghold is defined as a castle. Argument through the idea of holding safely. So do you know that a stronghold has to do with your mind? If a person's mind is telling them don't do this and they are dead set on not doing something, True. that's a stronghold in their mind. So if it's against the knowledge of God, that is a stronghold that is against the knowledge of God. True. So in other words, if your mind is saying, okay, I'm not going to love my enemy. When the Bible say love your enemy. Come on, that's good. You there you got a battle already right there. True. That, don't, it, that don't have nothing to do. The <laughs> devil then put his principles out there. Does everybody understand? That's good. In other words, the devil done already set the tone for everything that's against God. Okay? Now, our issue is being raised one way and being raised another way in Christ. My God. So down. where we once were dysfunctional and it made sense not to love our enemy and we were dead set on it My and God. nobody couldn't tell us different. That's a stronghold, so right? Amen. But then when you get saved and you say you belong to God and you are in the kingdom of God and this and that, and all of a sudden you read the scripture that says, love your enemy. <laughs> and then something in your mind say, oh, oh no, now God ain't doing that one now. Now, I was with you till you said that. See, now you got a stronghold. That's a spirit. Yes. That's fighting against the, that's warring against the Holy Spirit in you. True. The Holy Spirit is saying, listen, you, it's not up to you anymore. Right, right. That's a fleshly way of living. 
But now you should be Thank living in the spirit Thank you, of God now. Yes. Do y'all see what I'm saying? Thank you, God. That's so that's good. a mind thing that you have to deal with. And you have to acknowledge that you have to admit that I, it's time for me to agree with God. Yes. That's yes. why I always say, do we even agree with God? Because ain't no use of going further if we don't agree with God. Yeah. With everything God says. True. Even what we don't, even though we feel like <laughs> that ain't right, that ain't fair. You don't tell a king what to do in his kingdom. My God. You come in the kingdom and you do as the king say. And that's the bottom line. The citizens don't reason with the king. The king don't reason with the citizens to change his principles based on how they feel. Hallelujah. Does everybody get that? Hallelujah. All right. Amen. <laughs> so, you know, you can't pull down no strongholds. You can't bind up no demons. You can't do none of that if your flesh still doesn't agree with everything God agrees with. My God. That enemy still has permission to be right there in your way of thinking, in your thought patterns. Yes. And that's why we have to continue to cry out daily for the Lord. God, renew my heart, renew my mind. Lord, touch me each and every day. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. For the pulling down of strongholds in Jeremiah 23, you, 29, Jesus. it says, is not my word like fire? See, God's word is all it takes. God's truth is all it takes. Is not my word like fire, my declares God. the Lord, and like a hammer that smashes a rock? Ooh, and, and, and like a sword that comes and slices and come on. I yes. mean, my God, his word is so powerful. We want that to mean, see, we <laughs> what we want that to mean Ooh. is some type of um, Velcro, some type of He-Man. Right, right. Some type of <laughs> Skeletor versus He-Man thing. When God says, y'all done got it all wrong. My Lord. You don't understand how to come against these spirits. That's why when he began to teach us how to love and forgive, what we don't understand is we're coming against those strongholds. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Because he said, don't just hear my word, but do it. So when we do God's word and God say, love your enemy, what you're doing in the spirit realm Ooh. is you're pulling down yes. a stronghold so in a person's mind. How Thank are you, you doing that? So in your family, if you got somebody in your family that's disrespecting you or that's <clears throat> out of control with you or whatever. Okay, now you got to say, okay, I acknowledge that this is a spirit. And the only way I can deal with this spirit is to, is to do it the way God say do it. That's so right. if God say be patient with them, let me first of all be patient. Let me make sure I have self-control. And then, not only that, uh, I can't argue and cuss them back out like they're doing me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, when you go, when, when when you cuss somebody back out, they all for that. You ain't doing nothing for them. <laughs> but if somebody cussing you out and they all out of control and you go up to them and you say, I understand that you may be upset with me. And I, I don't I don't know quite why, but I'm willing to hear you out. Because evidently, you know, you feel a certain way. But I just want to tell you that I love you. I respect you. See, the devil don't know what to do with something like that. Sure don't. That person immediately go. Because <laughs> they expect you to cuss them back out. Because that's normal for them, right? Yeah. But what you did, you just flipped the whole script on them. <laughs> now them demons is like. Mm -hmm. Hey Amen. You, you know what I mean? And, and let me flip the coin to the other <laughs> side. The other side is this. When you cuss your family members out and they look at it, they, they look at you, they I, I, I thought he was a church going type. <laughs> I thought she was she was she was going to that church down the street. Uh-huh. I, 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 she she loved it. See, I knew that's that God stuff weren't real. Yep. I, 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 that's the first thing <laughs> they say. It kills your witness. Yes. For your family. Yes. Glory be to God. Yes. Help us, Lord. Yes. <laughs> so the Bible says, all right, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts Glory. itself against the knowledge of God. Yes. All right. Casting down arguments and every high thing. That's how you cast down arguments. Wow. Do, 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 come on now. Ooh, I caught that. We got to be peacemakers in this I thing here. It. Did you I, catch that, baby? I did. That's how you, you don't cast down the argument with an argument. Wow. With somebody cussing you out and off the chain, you can't cast 
that down doing the same thing that they doing. Teach. Because you're not dealing with that person is being there's a spirit operating through that person wow. that a, a power of influence that is operating through that person and speaking out wow. using that person. That's so good. That person is being used for the kingdom of darkness. Do y'all get it? So to come against that, listen, it's not your child that's the problem. It's that influence spirit that's operating in your child that's so good. that is controlling that child. Ooh, what that Lord. child is saying and thinking and acting upon. Yes. that is. So, so we got to deal with that spirit. True. My God. That's good. That's so so good. we're dealing with arguments. You know, they, they're bucking against the system of God. You know, they, they don't want to uh, uh, do godly things. You know, they don't they don't they don't want to love. They want to hate. Yes. They need it. But that spirit in them won't. It won't let them. You understand? That's good. That's so there's good. a part in everybody that's soft. And need love, but then that spirit creates a hard shell on them, and then they can't get to that soft place. That's true. You see what I'm saying? That's so true. we got to come and deal with that spirit. Yes. In Jeremiah 1:10, this is what God tells us how we deal with that. Jeremiah 1:10, God was speaking to Jeremiah. He says, I have appointed you today Glory over to nations and kingdoms to uproot. And tear down to destroy and overthrow to build and plant. In your own home, God have appointed you on this day. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, God have appointed me on this day. This day to overthrow those thoughts in the minds of your family members that is contrary to the word of God. You have the power and the authority of Christ to tear those thoughts down, to overthrow them, to build and plant. Come on, somebody. I hope y'all are following me today. Come on, somebody. My God, this is how you overthrow, build and plant. You step on the scene with the truth of God. You carry the glory of God. You are the light in your family. So guess what? When everybody is out the chain, buck wild, acting a fool, you are the total opposite of that. And they looking at you like you strange. But guess what? There's something happening in the spiritual realm. Yes. Glory to God. Then the Bible says, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Did you hear that? I told you we're dealing with thoughts. Yes. See, we want to be dealing with everything else so bad. So bad. But at the end of the day, baby, we're dealing with thoughts. Wrong yes. thinking brings about corruptive actions. True. We're dealing with thoughts. So what we have to do is bring those thoughts into captivity to the obedience of Christ. What thoughts? The thoughts that are, are that are against the knowledge of God. Yes. So when God says one thing and somebody else come around and say something opposite of that, no, you stand against that lie and you say, no, this is what my God says. This is the truth. This is how we're supposed to operate. This is what we're supposed to do. You yes. see what I'm saying? Regardless of if it's popular or not, it don't matter. It ain't going to be popular. Because the world is against it. You understand? Everybody's in an uproar. In other words, everybody's in an uproar in Minnesota. And they're in rage and anger. And they have a right to be upset. But over in the kingdom of God, he says, be angry, but do not sin. True. So their anger and rage is justifiable, but is corrupted. Does everybody understand that? That's and good. what's happening is, is putting more fire on fire. Mm -hmm. More fire because they don't know how to contain that. They don't know how to function and uh, in that type of emotion. Because guess why? They don't have the spirit of God in them to contain that. I totally agree. And um, the church, praise God, has um, not 
been effective. We have not been effective in going out and teaching and going out and reaching and drawing these lost souls to be able to handle situations that they're going through right now. So it's 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 we're in desperate times, praise yeah. God. And and the people need a voice, a voice of reasoning. Praise Absolutely. the Lord. Absolutely. And that's because we're too busy trying to get members in our building. Baby, you don't need no members in your building. You need the members of the body of Christ out there where the people are at. True. Somebody to be out there and be a, the voice of reason to bring peace out there. Yeah. And all these pe people who call themselves Christians, all these pastors and all these apostles, some of you even to call yourself chief apostles now, all this power, where are you? I'm trying to figure out why is a world of people up in flame and smoke right now Yes. and all we can think about is when we gonna get back in the building and have the next event baby the event is out there in the streets Yes. of corruption that's where the next event is the next event is right now come on somebody there needs to be some salt sprinkled out there where all the corruption is my God, help me today, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So let's go ahead and get ready to wrap this up. Hallelujah. Let's get ready to wrap this up. Romans 12, starting at verse 1. This is dealing strictly with us now. We dealt with what dysfunction is, how to uh, stand against it in the spirit realm, now let's deal with who we are. Romans 12, starting at verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, yes. which is your reasonable service. Yes. Your reasonable service is to present your bodies a living, somebody say a living Sacrifice, us, Holy, Spirit. holy and acceptable. Yes. Holy means to be set apart for the usage of God. Yes. That's what it means to be holy. God wants to set you apart and use you in the world. He wants to use you in these areas where there's so much corruption at. True. That is your reasonable service. While we keep trying to host more services in the building and think God is pleased with that. Baby, God say your reasonable service to please me is to go out in a dying world and be the light and be holy around them. Amen. My God. And, and we have reduced that to an office and we call it evangel evangelizing. Oh, well, I'm not called to be an evangelist so I don't supposed to go out and do, no, no. You are called to live your life in such a way that people can see Christ on you and they want to be like, man, hey, I love how she look. I love how he look. Hey, praise God. How can I get some of that? Absolutely. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your what? Mind. mind. Again, dealing with the mind that you may prove what is what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Simple as that. Do not be conformed to the way that this world thinks. To the way, in other words, we can't be out there doing fire with fire. Nope. There's something supposed to be holy and different about us. And I'm not talking about holy as in putting on no long dress and something around your head and coming down your face. Holy in your character and in your conduct, in our attitude. Hallelujah. Transforming. See, we all was dysfunctional. Remember? Yes. So in order to take a dysfunctional person and change them into a functional person, that has to do with transforming by the renewing of our mind. Transformation. That's good. Transformation of the mind, That's of good. the way that we think. That's good. So let me just, this is what we're going to have to do, brothers and sisters. The dysfunction of life. First Peter 4 and 1. The first thing we have to do is make sure we are in order. Make sure we are doing what we're supposed to do. 
Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, mm -hmm. arm yourselves also with the same mind. We all should have the same mind because we're taught by the same spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. For he who was suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. Glory to God. For us who used to live in total dysfunction, we have ceased from that now. Yes. Now we live for the will of God. So this was happening in your homes. <laughs> for we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. That means the will of the of of, of the, the way the world thinks and how we wanted to live and doing everything opposite of God. When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, reveries, drinking, parties, and abominable idolatries. See, we all used to live like that sure. at one time. Mm -hmm. But now, in regard to these, guess what? They think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation. Mm -hmm. That means wildness, promiscuity. Mm -hmm. Speaking evil of you. True. See, your family remember how you used to turn up, how you used to cuss, how you used to be the life of the party. They remember all that about you. Mm -hmm. But now that you're changed and you don't do those things anymore, they think it's strange. So you're strange to them now. Thank you, Jesus. So guess what? They speak evil of you. They actually talk about you. For the most part, you think you all that now. Oh, you think you holy, this and that. True. All kind of stuff they say about you. True. And we have to be willing to accept that. That's okay. That's cool. Because we still love our family. We're still a part of this family. Praise God. And now God has changed our position to be able to be one who can pray for our family. One who can be an example for our family. Where they can see the light of Christ and begin to be drawn to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. So this is a normal thing to come out of one kingdom and come into another. And then the people who are still over in the other kingdom think you're strange because you are strange to them now. Yes. And look, I want to bring to light uh, one thing real quick that when we're talking about your mind being changed, praise God. But then you like, well, I'm not perfect, so I'm still dysfunctional. No, you are functional in your thinking because you have come into an agreement with what God's word says. See, you was dysfunction because of the word of God and because of how you thought about you, the things you were thinking about when it concerned God's word. Now you are in agreement with God's word. So you are functional now by the spirit of God that now dwells on the inside of you. But through God's spirit, it now has to be able to, you have to let the Holy Spirit lead your life and control you to a point where your actions line up with, with what God's word say. Amen. 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 So in 1 Peter 4 verse 7 says, but the end of all things is at hand. Thank you. Therefore, Jesus. be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. Yes. There goes that word love. Have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Yes. What does cover mean? Cover means hide, pardon, conceal. In other words, love will hide, will pardon, will conceal a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. James 5.20 says, whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Yes. Proverbs 10, 12 says, Hatred stirs up conflict, but love makes up for all offenses. Yes. Glory to God. This is the spirit that we should be operating in in our homes. And this is what we need to be making sure that we're working on. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 says this. Love is patient. See, when God talk about love, he not talking about just one thing with love, mm -hmm. as we may know love to be. Mm -hmm. But He love consists of a bunch of things wrapped up in one word, love. 
<laughs> and love yeah. is patient and kind. Mm -hmm. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. That's good. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, oh but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, you, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. My Lord. Colossians 3.13 says, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must forgive. Yes. There's that word forgiveness again. Yes. One of the areas that we have the most difficult part in, that if we're going to go against these, the, this, this warfare, we have to make sure that we're operating in the spirit of God and love is the spirit of God. Now, this is what I want to leave you all with here on how to deal with what's going on in your families. Hallelujah. These are some tools that you all need to use moving forward with your families. James 1.19 says, Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger it's time that we start listening to our family quick to hear slow to speak slow to anger proverbs 18 13 says if one gives an answer before he hears it's his folly and shame god says that a person who answers before they hear a person out is a shameful and foolish person. That's what the Bible says. Because you open your mouth up and you don't let a person's whole thought come out before you interrupt and draw up a conclusion from a misunderstanding because you didn't hear them out. You wasn't quick to hear and slow to speak. You was quick to speak and slow to hear. You see how that can mess up a relationship or a line of communication? Yes. This is a problem with a lot of people. We, Everybody want to speak. Everybody want the last word. Nobody want to hear a person out. Talk over each other. First Timothy 2, 1 says, First of all, then I urge that supplications prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people. We got to make sure that we get in the spirit that we have to care for all people, no matter who they are, where they're from. Pray and intercede for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life. Godly and dignified in every way. If we want to live a peaceful life in this nation as the saints of God, he told us to pray for these people in these high positions. That means praying for Donald Trump. Praying for your local government. Praying for the corrupted police forces and all of that. We've got to pray that the Holy Ghost will encounter these people. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with malice. We can't be bitter. We can't be full of anger and slander. We can't do that. Not anymore. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, So now faith, hope, and love abide these three but the greatest of these is love the last I want to read two more and I'm finished 
Luke 6, 27 says, But I say to you who hear, this is God speaking. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Bless those who curse you means to speak well of a person and don't speak a cursing over their life. Even if people come against you, bid them blessings and just go on. And God say, pray for them. Pray for their soul, their salvation. And my last one is Matthew 5, 9. Says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Can we give my wife, uh, praise God, some hearts. Hallelujah. For this beautiful teaching. Glory be to God.